All right, Psalm 94, let's call this one a season for discipline in this psalm where the psalmist once again is going to offer us a how long psalm. This time, how long will the wicked seem to get away with doing whatever it is they seem to want to do? However, he is not going to despair because he's going to find value in the way in which God disciplines his own people, quite possibly treating them harshly, even in a season where the wicked are allowed to flourish in the psalm that begins in verses one through two, saying, God of vengeance, shine forth, rise up, O judge, and repay the proud. As he will go on in verses three through seven to ask, as we mentioned, how long, Lord, will the wicked exult using arrogant words, boasting, crushing your people, afflicting your heritage, killing the widow and the sojourner or foreigner, murdering the fatherless, saying he, meaning God, does not see as he will seem to turn to the wicked and say, understand, O oh, dullest of people, fools, he, God, who made the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplined the nations, will he not rebuke us as well? That's my paraphrase as he will go on to say he who teaches you does he not already know your thoughts as he will then turn inwardly quite possibly and say blessed is the man whom you discipline that's our title to teach out of your law so that you will give him rest in the day of judgment until a pit is dug for the wicked he will not meaning god will not forsake his people and abandon his heritage for justice will return to the righteous and all the upright will follow it seeming to refer back again to justice as he will move on in verses 16 and 19 to ask a question who rises for me against the wicked who stands for me against evildoers as he will go on to seem to say even if nobody else will my paraphrase what he definitely says is the lord will in times when his soul seemed to slip off into the place of silence, times when his foot seems like it might have otherwise slipped, and in times when his cares were many, his steadfast love, meaning God's steadfast love and his consolation sustained the psalmist. As he's then going to go on in verses 20 through 23 to ponder, can wicked rulers be allied with you, God? those who frame injustice by statute, who band together against the righteous and condemn the innocent. As he goes on to talk about the way in which God will return their iniquity to them, he makes a pause in verse 22 to say, but the Lord has become my stronghold and my refuge, seeming to quite possibly point back to the way in which he said, blessed is the one who God disciplines so that he will give him rest in the day when God brings judgment. Going back to a theme that we have mentioned before, in the day of judgment, God is fair. So insofar as we, no matter how much we claim to be his people, are partnering with the works of iniquity, we can expect the same consequences for practicing iniquity as those who don't claim to know God at all. Which may be why this psalmist is thankful for God's seasons of discipline, understanding that our own self-interest can often cause us to be dismissive of the concept of justice when it seems to cut against what's best for us. And so as he notices, there are two things that return or kind of boomerang in this chapter. One, justice that returns to the righteous in verse 15 and iniquity that returns to the wicked in the last verse of the chapter. And even though the word openly acknowledges that discipline rarely, if ever, feels fun, my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that much like this psalmist, we begin to appreciate God's seasons of discipline that help us overcome the self-interest that would prevent us from having rest during his days of actual rest.